<clears throat> and today is January the 11th. It is Friday. Friday, baby. Friday. Time for everybody to get off work. Time for everybody to be done with their crap. Time to relax a little bit and enjoy the weekend. Uh, what have you got planned for this weekend? Um, I don't think I have anything planned. I think that uh, perhaps, perhaps, my wife has got plans for me. Um, there is rumor that we may be getting my grandson this weekend, which is fine. You know, I, I enjoy seeing him. Um, it's definitely getting easier the older he gets. You know, he's about two and a half now, and so I can kind of interact with him and play with him, and, you know, he can kind of give me some feedback, and, and that's enjoyable. Like, I, I like interacting. Um, I think that I'm fun to hang out with once I can understand you know, subtle things like when you just whine, it's like, you know, hey, I'm hungry, hey, I want to watch TV, hey, I want to play, that kind of stuff. I mean, I can work with that. I can't really work with just, you know, all of a sudden a meltdown, which is, you know, what two-and-a-half-year-olds are kind of meant for. Um, that's just what they do. But anywho, uh, today I went to record a podcast, and I got off work kind of early today, which I was really excited about. Um, came home and... Uh, had some laundry to start and thought, all right, well, you know, let's go ahead and start the laundry and then we'll go in there and we'll set things up and I'll just start recording. Of course, you know, once in a while, like I'm running downhill with ideas. Like once in a while I have the, all of the fires burning hot and I'm just like, man, I can't wait to get this all out of my brain because there's so much going on or so much I want to say and there's so much I want to, you know, get people engaged about. And then there's some days I come in here and I go, bleh. You ever have one of those times where you have like such anticipation for something you want to do and then you get to that point and you just kind of fall apart you just go Bleh. and it's like come on kick it into gear you know do something and I thought all right I, I kind of need something to get me going here maybe it's caffeine maybe I need a little bit of caffeine so I went in the kitchen and I made myself some coffee you know I'm trying to I'm still trying to keep keto and I'm trying to cut down on the sugar and stuff like that you know so I'm I'm having some coffee with some um, with some uh, fake sugar creamer stuff and it tastes good and all that stuff and, and I'm like oh this is nice and warm because it's a cold day today I mean today the high was only in the 40s and burr cold so I thought all right well I'll go out and I'll get some coffee and hopefully that'll get me going and you know we'll kick it off from there I'm getting a text from my wife right in the middle of the podcast you ever have that happen um, Hang on, let me just type her a little something. I know for you listeners right now, you're going to be like, come on, Josh, really? You can't wait? Um, no. No, I can't. See, this is part of the live podcast. I mean, you get what you pay for, right? This is totally free. Like, you just paid for me to text my wife. And you're like, oh, God. I thought he was more professional than that. Well, your expectations are like, you know, here, and I'm like, not there. So, um, anywho. Uh, where was I? Oh, so the coffee. I had the coffee. I was like, oh, this is nice and warm. It's cold outside. This is enjoyable. I'm digging it. And I drank the coffee. I sat in here. I had everything set up and I went, I got nothing. I got nothing. Nothing. And I thought, man, this coffee is good though. Let me enjoy the coffee. Let me peruse the internet and see what's going on right in the world because I really haven't looked at anything today. Um, my job is a driver trainer and today I had a new guy and, um, we spent the day training. So I didn't really have a chance to, to look at anything other than my new guy. And we, and we talked and we went through the motions and I taught him how to do everything and all that fun stuff. But like right now there could be a zombie apocalypse right outside and I wouldn't have no idea about it. I'd be in here recording a podcast, and meanwhile, at my door, I hear brains or something like that. I don't know. I grew up with the generation of the the Night of the Living Dead, where the the zombies would eat brains. It was always comical. It wasn't never scary. I mean, I mean, when I was younger, I watched zombie movies, and it was like it was it was funny. And you know, my brother and I kind of have a a, a a thing between us where we talk about that any movie where zombies are slow it's always funny but any movies where zombies are fast it's frightening like if you ever watch Shaun of the Dead to me Shaun of the Dead is hilarious they're very slow moving there's jokes throughout of it you know and, and it's it's fun um, 
But if you, on the flip side of that, watch something like 28 Days Later uh, or uh, World War Z, it's like, holy crap, these things are fast and scary. I don't want to... Ah! <laughs> you know, it's like if they move slower, it's like you can you can kind of build the jokes up throughout, you know, and they keep coming, but it's like, no, I can still get through this. Now, I guess there is a flip side. You got slow-moving zombies in... Uh, Walking Dead. Of course, there could be an alternate universe where there's the Running Dead. I mean, that would be that would be different, right? Of course, I think if they if they're running, they have to be eating because you know you need fuel for energy. You need to you know consume some some flesh in order to to be sprinting. Uh, it's just a thought. You know, I'm throwing it out there. Here's a weird question: If zombies are eating people, do they defecate? Like do they still, you know, poop out the things that they eat? This is really nothing that anybody's ever thought of, I don't think. I don't think anybody's ever talked about it. Like in science fiction movies, they always depict the things as, you know, brainless and coming after you. And, you know, they only have one thing on their mind and that's consuming you. And we never see a zombie like with soiled underwear or, you know, wow, I really got to pass Steve, man. Steve was a, whew, boy, that was a lot to eat, you know. And I, you know, I also got the dog, so I gotta pass that too. There's never like banter between zombies. Why isn't there a bantering zombie movie? Like where they could just, I guess because they're, you know, all the movies that are always like, Ooh, and it'd be hard for them to have quick wit, you know. But there could be. There's an idea. I'm just throwing that out there. Listen, if you out there, or you're, you're like an amateur movie maker or a young person, and you're like, I'm, I'm trying to make the perfect movie. I'm trying to come up with a cool idea. And you make this funny zombie movie where they're, you know, have quick banter and whatnot. I'm not asking for much. I'm just saying, throw me a bone. Let me be in the movie. Let me uh, get a credit or something or, or, you know, I don't know, a percentage of the box office, whatever. It's just an idea. I'm throwing it out there. It's like a football. Okay, you throw the football out there, somebody catches it and runs with it. Right? So, anywho. Um, <sighs> okay, the wife is texting back. She says, oops, my bad. She was asking me if I was home yet. And I texted her back and said, yeah, recording podcast. So, anyway, she doesn't know when I do these because I try to do them when she's not here, honestly. I mean, I know that, you know, I have. I have in the past invited her to be on the podcast. I'm like, hey, babe, you want to be on the podcast? Nope, nope, nope. Of course, this is the same thing that I went through with her with, with YouTube. I was like, hey, you want to be on YouTube? And every time I'd point the camera at me, if she was in the background, she would run out of the way. And at a certain point, she kind of embraced it. And there's actually videos that she's recorded all herself and brought to me and said, here, I made all this video, put it on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Good for you. And then, I don't know if anybody saw us on our trip that we took to Disney. Uh, I posted those online. Uh, we took a Disney trip in, what was it, uh, the end of October, early November, right during that week. It was the Fall Food Festival, uh, International Food Festival at Epcot, and the changing of the seasons. They had decorations up for Halloween, and then my wife really wanted to see the transition from Halloween to Christmas. And so we booked that week just for that purpose. Well, there's video on there of us getting ready to walk into the park, and I'm holding the camera, and I'm like... Hey, here we are, blah, 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 blah. And she's in the background going, hey, and, do, you know, doing her tongue out and the little peace sign with both her hands. And I'm like, look at you, just hamming it up. You know. So I guess it's just a matter of time before I convince her to be on this. I just have to keep at it. She'd be a perfect guest because she listens to a lot of podcasts that are Disney related. And I'd love for her to talk about, as the title goes, stuff I heard. Stuff I heard, stuff, you know. Hey, here's some stuff I heard about Disney. Here's some stuff I heard about the park. Here's some stuff I heard about the movies. Here's some things I heard that, that they're doing with Marvel. Here's some stuff that, you know, she's she listens to all this and she tells me about it in very lengthy conversations. And I'm thinking the whole time, this is gold. Why aren't you, let's strap on the microphone. Come on, baby, let's make this happen. Let's do it. But no, she won't do it. Oh, well. I am encouraging her nonetheless. And you mark my words. Today is, uh... Today is, uh, what? What did I say? January 11th? Um, I will make this happen this year. This will be a thing. And she'll hear this and she'll go, Nope, nope, no way, no way possible, buddy. Uh-uh, no, no. And she'll be on here. I am very persuasive. <laughs> I, t I used to tell my youngest boy, 
uh, whenever we had some kind of uh, problem with his mom or, or my wife or or my mom or anybody, you know, uh, we would walk into the situation and they'd be very upset and I would talk to him and kind of make things okay and and we'd walk away and he'd go, how did you do that? And I'm like, I'm very charming. And I'd always do my hand in like a circle around my face. And he's like, what is the circle around your face? And I was like, it's the charm. You know, like, like in the cartoons when they smile and your, and your teeth have that certain glimmer to it. Now my teeth don't have that little glimmer to it and I don't do that Eddie Haskell smile. But, you know, I'd like to think that I have the ability to convince people to think about things differently. You know, if anything else, I at least appreciate other people's opinion and I'll listen to them. And I would like to think that in turn, other people do the same. Now, if I use that to my advantage, sort of like the force, but not exactly, then hey, that's great. That's really awesome. So, I'm working on that. And <clears throat> I, um, I kind of wanted to touch on something to do with YouTube here. I mentioned in the past uh, this this one video I have that's blowing up. I don't know what people have linked it to, but this OTA antenna video that I've made. Um, <laughs> I mentioned last time I was on here that it was up to 91,000 views, and I just recorded the thing in September. So the time before that it was at 60,000. It grew 31,000 from that Friday to Wednesday. Okay. From Wednesday to today, being Friday, two days later, it's up to 116,000 views. I don't get it. it. Did DirecTV and Dish really piss people off that bad that they were like, that's it, that's it, I'm burning all of this, I'm getting rid of them? I mean, if they did, great. I mean, they deserve it. They've been greedy the whole time. They've been overstepping their bounds with raising their rates. Nobody seems to listen to their people who complain. And you know what? If it takes us going backwards to make things happen, so be it. You know who wins right now? We do. The consumer. Because we get to choose what we watch. I'm sure studios are probably losing their butts right now because they're putting out a lot of content, hoping that people are watching, and they're not getting the numbers. I'm sure that they're probably scratching their heads going, I don't get it. We had a hit show. We had a good idea. We went through, this. We went through the template of all the stuff that... that that they set up before. No one's watching it because you keep raising the rates. You can't just keep raising the rates and not putting out anything worth watching. I mean, think about this, okay? You have Netflix. Let's just say Netflix, okay? I don't want to say Hulu and all the others that are out there. Let's just say you have Netflix, okay? If you pay for Netflix, you get good content. They are getting to be really, really good content on their own. But not to mention the fact that now they have the buying power of a lot more people signing up for them so that they can get shows that other people had. And these studios have shelved. And they're like, well, we got all this content. Maybe we could sell it to somebody they could stream. And Netflix is like, yeah, we'll, we'll buy that. Sure, we'll, we'll play it. Yeah. And case in point, I'm watching Anthony Bourdain right now on the last show he had before he passed away. And it's great. I had no idea it was on the air. I'm watching season eight of this thing. I mean, it is fantastic. He's like a poet and a chef and a punk rocker and a, a mindful jujitsu kind of guy. And I'm sure that it got lost on regular television, even though it was like, you know, eight or nine seasons or whatever it was ended up being, you know, there's no way it reached as big an audience as it can reach with Netflix. Now, what if Netflix went, you know what, <clears throat> this model's working great. Let's pretend we're the cable company and let's put commercials every three or four minutes. Would you stick around for that? I don't think I would. I'd go, hey, who else is out there that I don't have to watch commercials for? Oh, look, there's Hulu. Let's switch over to Hulu. Oh, they're going to do it too? Okay, who else is left? Oh, let's go to HBO. You're going to find a way to circumvent all this crap so that you don't have to keep watching these medical companies, you know, non-stop commercials about, do you have mesothelioma? Look, I don't blink. My name is Phil Mickelson. Sign up today. And he has this weird, creepy commercial where he doesn't blink. Ugh, it's unnerving. Um, I'm not going to say it's the reason I got, got rid of my DirecTV, but it certainly helped me to get rid of that because it's just bothersome to watch him not blink. I mean, who does that? Who looks at the camera for a full, I don't know, minute and a half talking 
and he doesn't blink. But not only does it doesn't blink, he looks like he's got his eyes like taped up. So he's like this the whole time. You know, if you're watching the video, you can see me open my eyes the whole way. Hi, I'm Phil Nicholson. I'm a professional golfer. And if you suffer from meso... I mean, dude, seriously. No one in the studio had the balls to say, Hey, buddy, how about don't look like a puppet? How about, you know, move like a normal human? Open your eyes like normal. Don't, don't do this weird, I'm reading a cue card from 20 feet away, and I'm so nervous I can't stop doing this. Let's have another take. This time, why don't you blink a little bit? Why don't you, you know, act like a person? A human. 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 Hey, human. Why don't you blink, man? Anyway. I love you, Phil. You're a good golfer, but you're not a guy for TV. I'm just saying. I am glad that you got your tan all fixed up, though. The last commercial I saw, you did, you know, the first commercial, you were you had just won the Masters, and you had that weird, I'm white from here up, and I'm... I'm burnt from here down look and they just couldn't fix it in makeup at all but since then they've kind of they've gotten your makeup all hooked up just right <clears throat> so anywho i'm sure that was one of those opportunities where they're like we got to cash on this now he just won i mean let's hook him up let's get him in there but i don't have to watch commercials with what i'm watching and you don't either you don't have to put up with that crap i mean seriously there's good tv out there if you were just wanting entertainment there's good tv YouTube TV apparently is kicking butt, man. I get people all the time on this thing writing me these long letters about how much they love YouTube TV. I would sign up for it if it wasn't for the fact that, that you know people are telling me they can get their local channels, and I cannot get any local channels except for Fox. Fox is the only local channel I can get if I use a streaming service. I don't know why. It just happens to be where I'm at here in Florence, South Carolina. I did realize that I can't get NBC, which is kind of a pain in the butt. I thought NBC was located at Myrtle Beach or perhaps Columbia. I did turn the antenna around and point it towards Columbia, and I pick up more channels from Columbia than I do from Myrtle Beach, which is interesting. Some of them are duplicates, but still. Um, the quality on the channels are actually a little bit better. Uh, the digital signal is a bit stronger. Um, as people had mentioned, you know, downloading an app to test your antenna, and I thought, okay, well, we'll see how that works. Um, Let's see, what do I have it saved as? It's called uh, No Cable, N-O-C-A-B-L-E. And it's just an app that you tap and you put in your zip code and it, it basically is a compass and it tells you where the closest towers are and how what their signal strength is so that if you live somewhere and you want to point your antenna a certain way, you can do it. And let's say you're somebody who's in an RV and you're traveling around but you just happen to have an antenna. You can park your RV, hit that button, and then go, oh, well look, there's television stations right over there. Why don't I point the camera over there and I can pick up some stuff? I'm just saying. It's an idea. It is an idea. Idea. Let's talk about Burt Kreischer for a minute. Burt Kreischer has started his world, his Body Shots World Tour. It's not just a nationwide tour, it's a world tour. He's going to Australia, he's going to England and Scotland and all over the place, man. He is on fire. And he just happens to have a tour bus going around to his different venues. Now, if you're curious about seeing Burt Kreischer, I recommend going onto YouTube and typing in the words, The Machine, Burt Kreischer, B-E-R-T-K-R-E-I-S-C-H-E-R. And there's a lot of videos up. He has his own YouTube channel, so if you type in his channel and look up The Machine, there's a story that he tells about being 22 and getting involved with the Russian Mafia and accidentally robbing a train on a field trip. Um, it's a fascinating story. It's humorous. It's kind of the reason he's a big deal right now. It's the reason I found him. My buddy Garth uh, turned me on to it years ago, and I was like, dude, I am in. Um, he is on a world tour right now. He has a, a tour bus and a tour bus driver, and they wrap the tour bus with his picture and the name of the tour and all this stuff. What's funny is his wife has a podcast, uh, Wife of the Party, and on the back of the tour bus, she has an advertisement for her podcast, which I thought is hilarious because his is all blacked out, you know, real cool looking, and hers is like, you know, pink and in like a, a nice sunshiny yellow and it's got wife of the party on the back which is funny because 
you know, the the whole Wife of the Party name came because he he wrote a book, and his book is called Life of the Party. Now, in his audio book, I highly recommend the audio book, by the way, the regular book is is an interesting read, but the audio book he reads himself, and he's dyslexic, and at times he loses his temper, and he... They, they left it all in. They left every bit of it in. There's times where he's reading it and he, he's, he's literally like, he's trying to read his own words and he's like, who wrote this? Holy crap, I can't get all these words out. Why, why is this so hard to read? I can't, I'm, I'm on fire. I feel like I'm burning up. I'm taking off my shirt. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> if you listen to the audiobook, uh, Life of the Party, it, it is hilarious. Um, he tells a lot of stories in there about how he got started, how he met Will Smith, um, how he got discovered uh, being the number one party animal at Florida State at the number one party school back in 97. Um, I read that article. I was in the Marine Corps and I was getting Rolling Stone magazine at the time and I saw this article. It had Beck on the front and there was an article, several pages, about this party animal and I thought, who the hell is this guy? Who did I... How would I have known that years later he didn't be in one of my favorite comedians? So anyway, He's on this Body Shots World Tour. If you want to check out his dates, go to his we his uh, website at bertbertbert.com. That's B-E-R-T-B-E-R-T.com. And check out where he's going to be near you. If there's any seats left at any shows, they're probably going to be single seats. Um, good luck finding seats together if you're going as a couple. I bought tickets a while back to go to the Charlotte show in February. And I'm sitting front center row. So if you're going to that show, let me know. And I don't know. Maybe we'll get together and, and have a beer or two at the uh, at the little pregame. But we'll see. Um, I got to meet him last February. Uh, my brother and I went and bought a sweatshirt and got pictures, and it was super cool. I got to tell him in person how much his podcast helped me stay alive. You see, I was a truck driver and drove down to Charleston every day and I was falling asleep at the wheel because I don't know many of you guys may not know this but there was a time where nobody really concentrated on your DOT hours that closely they just pushed you as hard as they could push you well it was hard to get enough sleep at night so I would listen to the radio but I would have an area right around Santee where I'd lose a, a radio signal for about 20 or 30 miles and I tried downloading music onto my phone and playing music over the over the radio, but there comes a time when you've heard every song that you know, and it just you find a groove where you can still fall asleep listening to your music. So then I started downloading music that I never listened to, and I would listen to anything from rap to country to electronic dance music, and it was just it was anything I could do to stay awake, and I was struggling. And a buddy of mine was like, hey, you know, check out this podcast. And I'd heard the word podcast before, but I was like, what? What? What is a podcast? I don't even understand what you're saying. And he kind of talked me through it. He told me how to download it. And he, you know, he's like, look it up on YouTube, man. There's videos that show you how. And he's like, check this guy's podcast out. Well, he turned me on to Joe Rogan's podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience. And on there, I listened to Bert's po uh, Bert tell his machine story. And then Bert was like, I'm starting a podcast. And I went, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely checking this out. And I've been listening since day one. Now, there's a few episodes that are no longer there because he had to have them removed because of uh, copyright music stuff. People were, you know, like Tom Petty was pissy about him and Pete Holmes singing Free Fallen, or his company was at least. So they made him yank the podcast over that on that episode. It was really hilarious because they had it playing in the background and they were singing and really off key, but but trying. Um, there's a there's a podcast where he does a solo one where he's. He's drunk and trying to sing a pirate song that he's making up on the fly. And it's hilarious. Uh, so, so anyway, um, that's kind of how I've gone down the avenue of following Bert and getting into what he does. And I didn't realize it, but I was watching some of the stuff that he was putting on TV. He has seven years of television. He did Trip Flip. He did uh, Bert the Conqueror. He did The X Show. Um... He did uh, Hurt Bert. Um, <clears throat> what else is there? Am I missing something? I'm sure I'm missing something. He has a show right now on YouTube called Something's Burning, 
where he has uh, comedians on there and they try to cook something or he tries to cook something and they all tell jokes with each other and, and get silly um, it's on the all all things comedy network on YouTube not that it's a network you know what I'm saying it's just like okay so if I put a video out it's on Joshua Peak. that's the name that comes up at the bottom when you look at my videos right so the videos that he does for that is a company that Bill Burr owns. Bill Burr's another stand-up comedian. And the, com and the company is called All Things Comedy. It's not just Bill. There's other comedians. that It's like a conglomerate of comedians. Anyway, the point being, it's on that page. So if you go to All Things Comedy, look at the stuff they have, or type in Something's Burning, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of episodes. And they're all funny. And they're all very long, too. Um, it's a fun show. If this was on TV, like... People on TV wouldn't let it happen because, you know, they curse and that kind of stuff. Um, and they talk about inappropriate things, of course, like comedians do. Like, honestly, a lot of adults do. Um, but it's hilarious. So anyway, check that out when you get a chance. Um, I, uh, I was going to record a podcast on the Anchor app. I know this is the technical part of this that, that a lot of people tune out of. But I was going to record an episode on the Anchor app, and there is a notification on there that says, Web recording is temporarily disabled. We are working on an update to web recording. It will be back soon. In the meanwhile, we suggest recording on your desktop and uploading to Anchor. You can also record using the free Anchor mobile app for iOS or Android. Great. So, anywho... That's not working, so I thought, hey, why don't I use GarageBand? Because there's times where I go to record, and I've learned that if I record with other people, that I need to have a way to dump what they say sometimes. And I can't do that when I record it in Anchor. Now, the technical part of this is, with Anchor, I literally hit record and talk for a straight 30 to, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. I mean, it's just, go, baby. There's no second takes. There's no, ooh, I should take that out. And I've kind of regretted that at times because um, I recorded a, a really awesome episode with my brother and my sister, and I had to get rid of some of it because my brother told a joke and it was a little inappropriate. And he's like, "Hey, can you remove that for me? Because uh, like I'm in education." And I was like, "Ooh, yep." So I had to lose the whole episode basically. Um, and there's times where. I have groups of people and, you know, the sound levels are all over the place. But if I record it in something like GarageBand, which I'm doing right now, um, and I'll, on the camera, I can show you guys what that looks like as things are moving along. Um, if you're checking out the YouTube, you can see that part. Uh, but if I record it on the GarageBand, then I, I'm fine as far as the levels. I can hear everything. I can test it out, see what it sounds like, and then I can publish it with no big deal. Um, I even have music at the beginning that I created myself using GarageBand, uh, Apple Loops, or whatever it's called. So, you know, it kind of allows me to do whatever I want. And if somebody says something, I can hit stop, I can go back, I can delete it, and then I can record more. Does that make sense? If you're not into this kind of stuff, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Just get back to the funny. Okay, so back to the funny. Um... Um... I got no funny. I got no funny. It is about 30 minutes, though, so I am going to wrap this up. I would like to tell everybody to uh, rate, subscribe, review, tell your friends, share. Um, I appreciate every one of you. And uh, I'm going to keep working on this, and we're going to keep getting better. Uh, I'm hoping the quality of this is okay, running through GarageBand. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know. All right? Y'all take care. Thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you later.